All right, guys. So we hit 165 grot. <clears throat> All right, guys. So we. Hit. So what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Hidden Heights Farm. My name's Kevin and this is my buddy, my great Pyrenees, Mojo. You sitting pretty for him, buddy? So this weekend has not been too great. Uh, the weather's been nice, it's finally cooling down. But uh had two things happen to me in the last two days, yesterday and today. And uh, if you guys watched the last video, you seen we went and bought the two meat goats, the little Spanish goats that we are going to have processed. And I had a blowout. Well, I got this trailer backed up to the shop um, I couldn't bust one of the lug nuts loose with the four-way wrench that I had because it was uh, for some reason these lug nuts are too deep and I couldn't get a good hold on it with the four-way I had and it was starting to kind of strip it out so I'm gonna use the impact on it so I got it here in my shop I've got a big air compressor um, with that being said I can't leave my truck hooked up to this trailer because um, I use this bigger Toyota this is a Tundra that I have it's older, but it's a bigger truck. I use it to haul trailers and this and that. And then I have a Toyota Tacoma. It's even older than this one. And uh, I drive it back and forth to work every day and to, you know, Walmart, wherever we got to go to town. It's a little better on gas than driving this big truck. But yesterday, before the OU game was on, I drove to town and on my way back, I got a big surprise. And it wasn't a blowout, it was something much worse. Uh, it could have been a lot worse. So let me get in the garage here and uh, show you guys. Let me get this light adjusted here. Anyways, I'm driving home and a rock about the size of a uh, baseball hits my windshield right in front of the driver's seat. And it scared me to death. I immediately stopped the truck and Kind of gathered my uh, senses, I guess you could say. Got my bearing. And uh, I went, I didn't know if kids were throwing rocks over a hill or what it was. Because I'm going up this big hill and there's a house, a couple of houses that are on this side of the road. And uh, this thing hit, I get glass, this, this glass shattered, it's hard to tell. But there's little pieces of glass everywhere in the truck. Um, it shattered, it went on my face, all over me. I had groceries in the truck, it got all over that. Uh, so I stopped at the homeowner's place, and when I started pulling up the driveway, I, I immediately knew what the problem was. I thought they were brush hogging or something, but what it was is they had a skid steer, and it was a, uh, an actual mulching unit that it had on the front, and they were taking out a bunch of trees. And it just happened to hit a rock as I drove by through that rock, through my windshield, it pretty much stuck in my windshield, shattered, and uh, just went glass whenever it was like an explosion. And I'm going the speed, I'm going like 45 miles per hour. But, anyways, that was just two of the bad things that happened to me this weekend. Uh, I don't know, it's just like a uh, spear chaos or something going on. I just need to stay home, I guess. But, uh, oh, it could always be a lot worse. That rock could have hit me in the head uh, if I was going a mile per hour faster or something. It could have easily hit me in the head or in the shoulder or something, knocked me out, and I could have wrecked and flipped my truck. Um, I had my side windows down because the temperature has been a lot nicer here lately. So uh, thank, thank God uh, he was watching over me and the rock hit the windshield and not my head. Or one of the kids could have been with me and it hit them as well. So I'm thankful for that. The homeowner uh, was super nice about it. He, uh, he already... Let me get a quote for a new windshield, and he's already uh, paid me cash to have it replaced. Um, so everything went great with that. It's just, it's, it just wakes you up and lets you know how, how bad things can be sometimes or, you know, how close of calls you can get. So, anyways, what do you got there, Kaya? Uh, I almost said Skeeter. Yeah, that ain't Skeeter. He's a lot bigger than Skeeter. Yeah. Mojo, you know what we're having for dinner here in a little bit? What? Quail. Wait, we are? 
Remember that day we butchered those quail and you and Caleb helped us? Oh, yeah. It's time to eat them. We're going to have that and uh, I think Mom's cooking a blackberry cobbler. Yay. So we're fixing to go in the house and uh, help Rachel get that going. So guys, here on the farm, we try to show our kids the importance of of homesteading, uh, being self-sufficient, uh, whatever you want to call it. So they, if you guys were with us when we processed those quail, we, we grew these quail here on our farm. And when they got to butcher weight, the kids and Rachel helped me butcher, I think we did seven quail that day. And we stuck them in the freezer. So now, it's been a couple weeks, now we're ready to cook them. So we're going to, we're going to cook them, but... This shows the kids the whole process of why we farm and why we homestead. So we grow our own garden, grow our own vegetables, uh, we grow some fruit, we got some apples and pear trees. We grow our own goats and as you know in our last video we got these butcher goats. We're going to get them processed by an actual processor or a butcher, whatever you want to call them. So we get the right cuts of meat and we know what we're eating like the steaks and whatever. But our, but Rachel and the kids hasn't have not tried goat meat. So, anyways, uh, the kids were involved all the way from these quail hatching from eggs, feeding them, watering them, growing them up to about six to eight weeks old, and then we butchered them. Now they're in the freezer, and tonight they get the reward of eating something that we grew totally here on the farm. So let's get in the kitchen and give Rachel a hand and get these quail done. So we're gonna cook them the way Dutch recommends. So Dutch swears by. Uh, Frying them in a cast iron chicken fryer for a little bit then sticking them in the oven uh, to finish getting to temperature So we're going to give that a shot here in just a minute. Alright guys, so uh, we're going to get this blackberry cobbler stuck in the oven first And then we'll get to these quail. Rachel's just getting the rest of the blackberries put in there Make sure you put enough of them in there. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I love blackberry cobbler And we picked all these ourselves this summer, uh, Rachel and the kids and I we have videos on that as well if you guys want to go back and check that out. These all, a lot of them are grown at her grandpa's and some of, some of them are grown here on our place as well. But uh, we're, I think we're ready to stick it in the oven and we'll get to these well. And if you want to know how to make the blackberry cobbler, I think I did a video on it. Yeah, you did a vid, I yeah. think you did a video over blackberry cobbler. I know I we did so. one over making the jelly. I'm pretty, well I don't know, I can't remember. It's either that or on our Facebook, I can't remember. I yeah, could have sworn we did somewhere. one. I can't remember. Yeah, anything. there is one over the black cobbler. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I can't remember five minutes ago. All right, I think we're ready. So, how long you put that in there for? Um, I'm gonna uh, do thirty minutes. 375. At 375, okay. and then we'll check it. Well, let's get to these quail real quick, and then I'll let you cut up that clean and stuff. Alright guys, so we got our quail here that we butchered here on the farm. Uh, we got them all dressed out. We got them skinned, so we don't have no skin on them, but there is quite a bit of fat. We're going to leave that on there. Uh, we've never cooked quail here before, so we're going to see how we like it with the fat on there. And then we got uh, an egg wash, just a basic egg wash, eggs, uh, some milk, and some pepper. And then we got some uh, flour here with some salt and pepper in that, and some uh, just some seasonal or whatever. But what we're going to do is we're just going to stick this in the egg wash, get it all coated good. Kind of drain it off your excess here. Make it a mess. And then just kind of roll it in this flour. Make sure you get it covered all good. And the way we're going to do this is... We're going to get it all covered with flour. We're going to stick it in this cast iron chicken fryer. Got some grease in there. We're going to put it uh, breast side down first. 
And we're going to let that get brown. And then we're going to stick it in the oven to get it up to temperature. So we're just going to leave it in that cast iron to uh, get that flour brown. And then we'll stick it in this pan over here. And go ahead and stick it in the, in the oven. see these quail are getting nice golden brown I'm going to, going to go ahead and turn the fire off uh, drain all the excess grease off and stick them in this little pan man these things look good just like they are we want to make sure they get the temperature so we're going to bake them in the oven on 375 I don't know how long we got a little thermometer that we will continue to check them with as they cook I put them breast up I think these guys in the oven. Put them underneath this black cobbler. Cobbler's Cobbler. looking good. Yep. Alright, so we got our quail in the oven. We're gonna leave it on 375. We'll check them here in 10 minutes and see where the temperature is. Alright guys, so we got the cobbler and the quail in the oven finished baking and right now Rachel just got finished with the zucchini and uh, squash, <clears throat> fried some of that up. And over here she's got some sugar rush, peach peppers, and some jalapenos. She dipped in that egg batter and dipped them in flour. And now she's frying them up here in the grease that we cooked the quail in. And the little thing I tried is I put a little bacon grease in with that grease with the quail. Give it a little more flavor, so we'll see how that turns out. Okay guys, we hit 165 degrees on this digital thermometer with these quail. So we're going to go ahead and pull them out. And looks like they're done. Cobbler should be done here pretty quick. That looks yummy. So we're gonna let them cool off a little bit and uh, get our plates repaired and then we'll see how we like it. All right guys, so we're fixing to try the quail out. Don't let me forget about this. As soon as we try the quail, we're going to open this box. We got some mail call from some awesome subscribers of ours. 
Uh, we kind of already opened it, but we're going to open it again on video and let the kids see it as well. So stay tuned to that. So go ahead and try your quail, guys, and let's see what you think. Okay. If they don't like the quail, then I'm just going to go let them all out of the hutch and let them run wild. Hold on. Because there's no sense in raising them if they don't want to eat it, right? I'm scared. I definitely want to eat it. Don't be scared, Phil. It's really hot. Here, let me cut you a piece off. It's easier. Is it hot, Kai? That's good. You don't know, even try it yet. Mm hmm. Watch out for bones. What do you think? Okay. Good? Let me try. Let me cut yours. No. Okay. What do you think? Great. You like it? Mm-hmm. Is this as good as chicken or better? Mm. I'm kind of see what Rachel thinks. I already tried it. <laughs> I couldn't wait. I love quail. This is the first time I've had it fried though. Well, it's fried and baked, but... Ooh, it's, hot. it's delicious. Is it? Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to try my pepper. All right, guys. So we are going to eat this quail up. And uh, as soon as we get done, we'll uh, open this box and show you guys what our subscribers have sent us. Thumbs up or not? This? Thumbs mm -hmm. up. This is hot. No, what yeah. do you think about the quail? Thumbs up on the quail? Super, you really like it? Super thumbs up. All right, quail. let's eat it. Mm -hmm. I think Real it's good. thumbs up. Okay, you guys heard it. Guess we're keeping the quail. Yay! Okay, guys, so we're fixing to do mail call. Yeah. We got a package. Are you ready? Let's mail call. Where you get packages. Oh, yeah. Subscribers. Oh, yeah. Mail call. <gasps> Caleb, Caleb knows. He used to watch Blue Clues. No. Okay, let's see what we got. Now, this is from our subscribers, Jeffrey and Kristen Jones. So, I'm not going to show their address on there. Keep that flipped around. Now, I've already peeked, but the kids haven't got to see. So we're pretty excited. What is that? What is that? This is so pretty. Wow. What oh is my that? Oh my gosh. So these are all handmade soap. Soap? Yes. You don't have to read the whole thing. Out. I want this, this one. I call this one. Okay, so I'm going to read. I call it the one. Mm, that I'll one read some good. of what, what the, they sent. Kevin, Rachel, and family. Thank you for your farm videos. They are our favorite on YouTube. I feel somehow connected to you and your family. Your family is beautiful, and I feel like Rachel and I would be neighbors. I feel like <clears throat> I feel like Rachel and I would be friends if we were neighbors. We live in Maryland. Please enjoy the soap. I make it in my house with the help of my eight children. Eight. Wow, you're a busy lady. That's for sure. Yeah, but... They Look are, at this soap. They are all natural with olive oil, palm oil, coconut oil, Turn around so I can see this. sweet almond oil, and castor oil. And she uses cosmetic grade pigments for color. And Turn around so I can see the names. She says, please enjoy them and thanks again for your wholesome family entertainment. Kristen. Hey, turn around so I can see the names, guys. And she says she does not sell it. She only makes it for friends and family. So that is a lot of work. And look, this one has a They look a heart. amazing. Wow, they smell awesome. Look at this. Guys, that, look. Yeah, that's heart. awesome. There's, wow, there's a ton of them too. They smell. That's a lot of work. Yes. I four of them. If anybody's ever made soap, you know how much work right. it is. Oh, so, so Kristen and Jeffrey, thank you so much. Yes, this is awesome. You. And uh, we're excited yeah. to use it. It smells incredible. It, it looks almost too good to use. It's it's very it's pretty. Beautiful. Yes. Um, thank you guys so much. Uh, that, this is awesome getting packages and stuff in the mail, and especially these kind letters. That means the most to us. So thank you so much again. But anyways, guys. Um, that being said, we tried the quail, and I think we're going to continue to raise the quail. What do you guys think? Yes. yes. Definitely. Everybody gave it like two thumbs up. Um, I'm going to have to say it's one of the best meats I've ever tasted as far as flavor goes. It was really good. What do you guys think? They smell. Did you like it? The quail? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Hey, hold on. I want to tell all of the kids that helped make this yes. soap. Thank you. So, Thank you. Kristen and Jeffrey and then all of her kids helped make this soap. Tyler, Nicole, Anthony, Benjamin, Christina, Alyssa, Franklin, and Junebug. Thank you guys. You have no idea. 
Tell them no. thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Are you crying? It means a lot. Look at that. Look at all that. That they made that with their bare hands. That's a lot of work, mm -hmm. and they took the time to send it to us, and it even cost a lot of money for shipping. Yeah. It, so it probably that means a lot like to us. Thank you guys. So guys, thank you so much again for the soap. We truly appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so we're gonna wrap up this video. Uh, we already ate some of the blackberry cobbler. It was awesome, and. Uh, if you guys if you guys are not subscribed to the channel, we ask you guys to please subscribe, smash that thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.